YouTube. Sidekick here in my trusty A4 Skyhawk with another A4 version 2.0 tutorial video. And today we are finally getting out to the range, which of course, if you know me and you know my channel, knew was bound to happen eventually. Uh, and those of you who are longtime viewers of the channel will probably recognize that we're at Kobaletti. And that means that we're headed out to the iron bombing test range. So we're going out in a fairly simply loaded Skyhawk today. We just have four Mark 82s on board. But we do have ammunition set to unlimited in this uh, mission. So that means we're basically going to be able to do as many drops as we like. So we'll take a little bit of a look at how to use the armaments panel to achieve some different effects when you're dropping bombs. And we'll also uh, take a look at how to set up the armaments panel just for a basic drop as well. In fact, I'm going to do that here once I get out on the runway, so we're not trying to do it while we're flying. I am going to focus on getting lined up on the runway since I'm still learning to use the differential braking. Okay, so here we are getting lined up on the runway, so let's just pause here. Okay, let's get the uh, weapons control panel set up. So let's look uh, at the bottom of the cockpit here. Behind the control column, it's down at the bottom. All of the weapons control is down here. The first part of the panel that we're going to want to access are the pylon switches here. And we're going to want to enable the pylons that we want to have active in our case this time it's going to be pylons two and four, which are the inner pylons, which are the ones that have the bombs on them. So we'll enable pylons two and four. And once we have done that, the next thing we have to do is to decide how we want to drop the bombs. In our case, we're going to use the bombing computer. So we're going to rotate the selector switch all the way clockwise to the computer setting. Unlike in earlier versions of the A4, we will not use the labs setting. That is a setting that is there for sort of historical legacy. It's not active in the simulation. So we want to use the bombing computer setting fully turned to the clockwise position. So we'll set that now. Then the last thing that we want to do is to decide how we are going to drop the bombs. We have a number of different options here, and we'll talk about them a little bit more when we're flying. For our first run, all we want to do is drop a single pair of bombs, one from each pylon, which means that they are going to be dropped as a pair step, meaning both bombs are going to be dropped at the same time, all at once. So we go to the Mode Select button down here, and we are going to turn it to Pair on the step or left-hand side. Now, if we wanted to drop more than a single pair of bombs at a time, we would select the other side of the mode selector switch, the ripple side. Then we would have to decide how we wanted the bombs to come off the aircraft. We could either have them come off in singles, in pairs, or as a salvo. Singles will work no matter what stations the bombs are on. Pairs will only work for weapons mounted on the wing pylons. So even if you have an even number of bombs on the center pylon, say six bombs, you cannot drop them in pairs. You can only drop them in singles. So once you decide on the mode selector switch how the bomb should come off the aircraft, then you have to decide how many bombs or weapons you want to drop. And you do that with the AWRS switch. It's the left hand selector and it's calibrated in numbers from 2 to 40. Uh, we'll use it a little bit later on when we start dropping the bombs in Ripple. Once you have decided uh, how you're going to drop the bombs, how they're going to come off the aircraft, how many you're going to drop, the last thing you have to do is decide the interval between each one of the bombs. You do that with the drop interval selector. That's the middle switch. It is calibrated in milliseconds. So note that the initial setting of 20 milliseconds is pretty short. 
pretty hard for us to determine that that isn't instantaneous. In fact, there's often times when you may want to drop bombs at intervals longer than the 200 milliseconds, which is the maximum setting on the dial, in which case you will flip the X10 switch, the times 10 switch, to times 10, and then you can multiply the number of milliseconds by 10. So now the dial starts at 200 and goes to 2000, or two full seconds between bombs, and we'll take a look at that later on when we're out at the range as well. So, I think for our initial run, we're all set up. We're just going to drop a pair of bombs. They're going to be on stations 2 and 4, and we are going to use the bombing computer to drop them. The only thing we will need to remember to do out on the range is to enable the master arm switch. Yes, we will need to remember to enable the master arm switch, and we will be ready to drop bombs. Right, I think we're ready to proceed. Got half flaps, got trim pulled back. Let's advance the throttle. And release the brakes. And we are on our way to the iron bombing test range. Let's see how we do keeping it down the middle of the runway. Not too bad today. Coming up on rotate, and there it is, and we are off. Okay, so as I said, we're heading out to the iron bombing test range. Um, we'll take a look at it more closely when we get there. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, this is a mission that is available on my Discord server. Uh, it uh, basically sets up a bombing range. Uh, there's a script that will tell you how well you do when you drop your bombs. Um, the important thing about it is that it doesn't use any downloadable content, so uh, it only needs pieces from the stock game. So uh, you should be able to load the mission even uh, if all you have is a stock game and the A4. Uh, there's a bunch of different targets on the range. We'll take a look at them probably a little bit more uh, when we get out there. But for now, it's up there just this side of that lake, just inland from the lake. So we're going to get ourselves headed out in that direction. And we're probably going to get up to, I don't know, probably about 5,000 feet. And get ready to, to do our initial um, trim run over the range to get set up for doing range practice. So the range practice we're gonna be doing is not actually random, it's actually loosely based at least on a US Naval training publication called Sea Natra 1209, uh, which the US Navy uses to train T-45 pilots um, to use the range. Eh, we don't follow it exactly, but at least it's the basis for what we're doing here. Uh, quickly now, I'm just noticing I got my APC light on because my HOTAS puts that in standby automatically. I'm gonna turn that off so you don't have the extra light up at the, uh, on the next to the canopy there. So a couple of things to remember when we're doing range practice. Uh, number one, it's very important to remember that the center of rotation of the A4 uh, is not the center of the site. It's actually three mils or 54 degrees above the center of the site. It doesn't matter most of the time when you're flying level, but when you're doing dive bombing, um, it actually becomes very important and you'll, you'll see that as we do the practice. The other thing that's really important is to get your trim right, and that's why we do what's called a trim run, which is what we're, we're doing now. We're actually coming over the range, and what we're doing is we're flying uh, slightly nose low, full power, and trimming the aircraft out so that the nose doesn't rise or fall when we take our hands off the stick. And this means that when we go to do our dive bombing runs, the aircraft will stay in the dive and not require any stick input, and that's really important for accurate bombing. So our trim is set, and uh, we flipped on the master arm because we've done the trim run. And now basically we're just flying a circuit around the target. We pull up uh, around 20 degrees climb. We roll over about 40 degrees. And when we come to within 30 degrees of the reciprocal, which in this case is 210 degrees, 
we took take a look at where we are at the target and we we uh, can straighten that leg this is called the abeam leg straighten it a little bit if we need to to gain more altitude So there's really three important parts of any dive bombing attack. The first is the uh, approach, which is what we're in the middle of doing now. Then there's the roll in, and then there's the actual dive and the actual weapons release itself. And we'll talk a little bit about those as we go along. So as you can see in the approach, we're just trying to shape a path around the target, keeping the target off the left-hand side. If the target's a front of, in front of a beam as it is now, we're getting closer. If it's behind the beam, we're getting farther away. So I'm a little bit farther than I want to be. So I'm pulling up a little bit closer. This isn't going to be a really steep dive bombing run. Um, the steeper there is, the less time you have. So this will be, try and make this a fairly relaxed one. We are going to use the bombing computer. So that means that the method for delivering the bombs is to put the center of the site, the pipper, over the target. When we're satisfied it's over the target, we press and hold the pickle until the bombs release. So now we're shaping the approach around, getting a little closer. Now on the roll-in, we put the lift vector on the target, so the top of the cockpit to the target, and now we're going to roll the flight path vector, which is the top of the circle, over the target. You can see now that the airplane really doesn't rotate around the middle. It rotates around the top of the circle. That's why sometimes it takes a little bit to get lined up. Now we're going to pickle and hold, and we're just going to hold there until the bombs go. Okay, that's not bad, but I would have expected a little bit better. I'm not sure if it was because my lineup was bad. But we'll definitely want to give that another try. So, just uh, to take a little bit more time to describe the roll-in. We roll in until the top of the cockpit, so the lift vector, is pointed at the target. And then it's really important to pull up until the top of the sight ring, the 50 mil ring, is over the target and use that as we roll out because that's what's going to allow us to line up because that's actually the center of rotation of the aircraft. And if we try to rotate around the middle, we're going to find it a lot harder, harder to get lined up. So we want to rotate the top of the, the ring on the target and then we want to pull the center up. Ah, I think I know what my problem was. The astute amongst you have probably realized I did not have my air-to-ground radar on when I was using the bombing computer. Uh, that's what you get for not using the checklist. Okay, let me just get sorted out here, and then I'm going to reach down and I'm going to turn the radar into air-to-ground mode. Right. Looking pretty good. Let's reach down. Let's put the radar in air-to-ground mode. Now we get the radar on. Okay, that should give us better results. So again, coming in a little tighter this time, but again, I'm just shaping my approach to try and manage my distance from the target to come to the roll-in point where I want it. Uh, I'm pulling up nice and high, 12,000 feet, so we can get a fairly steep dive, fairly good look at the target. The real trick here is when we roll in, we want to get that, that flight path vector, the top of the ring, over the target as soon as we can, and that's going to give us the chance to straighten out because we want the ladder coming straight up towards the target and that's going to make sure that our wings are level which is really the thing that improves our accuracy. So we roll around, we get the ring on the target and now we pull the pipper up to the target, pickle, and now we hold. We're not pulling up and we get an almost immediate release and a much better result. Okay, so air to ground radar was the problem it looks like. So you'll notice that when I am doing this, I am not pickling and then pulling. Now, it, with the bombing computer, you can actually do that. Um, it, it will actually allow you to drop bombs and even toss them quite some distance. Um, I'm going to say, though, it's not the best way to make sure that you get accurate results. Because as you pull up, you tend to introduce a little bit of a chance that you're not going to pull up straight and you're going to reduce the accuracy. The best way to get an accurate result is to put that uh, flight path vector, so the top of the 50 mil ring, at an aim off mark, and then wait until the pipper gets to the target, press the button at that point, and just keep flying in a straight line. That's why the trim run is so important. You really want to fly your dive with as little inputs on the stick as possible. That's the best way to get accurate results. There's other ways of doing it, but that is the way to get the most accurate results the most consistently, I think. So let's um, 
give it one more shot here uh, just to make sure that that one wasn't a fluke so again we're shaping our path around we're 12,000 feet we're coming in around the outside of the fields down there as a roll-in point which is usually where we want to be so we'll probably be between be that steep a dive maybe 30 degrees maybe a bit less wait until we look like we're on the right roll-in line right there and we're going to roll the top of the cockpit to the target we're going to pull up we got to move down so we can see the top of the site because it's the 50 mil line we want to see get the 50 mil circle over the target and roll it till the ladder is pointing straight up we got to get that straight hold it there and just wait for the pipper to come to the target there and hold and another really good result. So, uh, I think we've proved that that's the technique that gives us good accurate results. Now, I will point out that both of those drops were pretty low, um, and they were at a pretty low angle. Actually, it was closer to 20 degrees than 30. So, that's fine on the range, but if we're actually uh, dropping bombs on uh, people who are trying to prevent us from doing that, um, we will want to drop from as high an altitude as possible. In fact, you can kind of make the case that the presence of radar-guided AAA in great quantities in Vietnam is in large measure why we ended up with a bombing computer in the Skyhawk in the first place. Hitting the target from relatively low altitude without uh, computer assistance was something that pilots learned to do in the Second World War um, and were pretty good at. Hitting the target dropping above an altitude where the radar-guided AAA was a virtual death sentence was a lot harder, and that meant really uh, we need to be above 4,000 feet when we're uh, pulling out or you know certainly when we're dropping the bombs as opposed to more like 2,000 feet on those last two drops so um, we're gonna need to get in a little tighter to the target and get a steeper dive angle and we're gonna need to be a little bit faster about picking up the target so we can get the pickle on now remember that the higher we want to drop the farther away from the target point we want to put the top of the 50 mil circle which is our aiming mark so the farther from that that we put that uh, farther from the target we put that the higher we're going to end up dropping so we roll over good steep roll over this time i'm going to pull that 50 mil circle to the target and roll out get the ladder pointing straight up oops gone a little too far get it back now i want to move that Aiming mark away from the target, wait for the pickle, hold, and the bombs are gone. And another good result. Now we dropped a lot higher that time. I think we actually dropped the bombs above uh, almost around 4,500 feet. Uh, we still didn't pull out till around 3, uh, but that would have been a lot more survivable drop than either of the first two. Okay, so let's uh, let's change our weapons configuration here. Let's drop all four bombs this time, um, and let's drop them in pairs uh, with, say, 50 milliseconds or so between them. So we're going to go back down to the weapons panel here in a sec. We're going to set the AWRS to four, so we're going to drop all four bombs. We're going to drop them in a ripple of pairs, so we set the mode selector, and we give them the drop interval pretty close to 200, so we can actually get some spacing between them. So, we'll drop two pairs of bombs with the 200 millisecond delay between them. We'll take a look and see what kind of result that gives us. And, and let's change up the target a little bit this time. Let's go for the H-shaped building in the compound, just to give us a slightly bigger target since we're dropping four bombs with a little bit of space between them. So we've come out fairly far out, so we're pulling back in around, because again, we want to keep a little bit steeper dive angle. Good for our drop height. So hopefully you're seeing what I'm saying when we're rolling in about using the top of the sight ring. I know it sounds a little counterintuitive, but if you watch, you'll find that that really is where the sight rotates around. So if you want to get the sight aligned perfectly under the target, which means your wings are level, you have to do it by putting the top of the sight ring on the target and then rolling the wings until, as I call it, the ladder of the sight is going directly down underneath the target and then you can pull the pipper up to the target or even just let the pipper walk up to the target. If 
you really will find if you try to put the center of the sight on the target and then get yourself lined up, that's when you're going to have a really hard time because every time you roll a little, the sight's going to move left or right. Okay, we're just about there. So we're going to roll in. And let's get the building pulled up to the top of the ring. And about there, roll around. See how we're rolling around that point? Now we're good. We're underneath the target. Now we pull up. Just going to wait for the pipper to come up to the target. Not pulling. Just holding steady. Pulling up a little bit this time. Just a slight pull up to gain a little bit more height. And you can see we pretty much uh, nailed the building. You can see that's what 200 milliseconds uh, between bombs looks like. So even 200 milliseconds, not a really long time between bombs. Okay, this time once we get ourselves set up, let's try to actually do a really nice long ripple. Um, we'll set the bombs to ripple off singly this time, and we'll actually flip the 10 time switch and give a nice long interval between them. We'll go over to the far set of targets. There's three circular targets. We'll see if we can cover that whole spread of targets with a, kind of a linear pattern of the bombs. So let's go down here. We're going to ripple in singles this time. 10x that and give it, I don't know, around a second or so. Half a second? Yeah, half a second. And we'll leave the quantity at four. So this time we should drop four individual bombs. The spacing between them be about two and a half times what the spacing between the pairs was last time. So that should be a fairly good long ripple. We'll see how much of those three targets we can cover with that. So we're back with basically where we've been the last few runs. We're trying to get consistent. Uh, we're somewhere around 12, 13,000 feet. And we're rolling in. And we're going to use the first target as our target and then drop the bombs beyond that. So once again, I'm pulling that 50 mil ring up to the target. I'm rolling out a little bit below the target, but that's okay. I'm getting the wings level, so the ladder's straight up and down. Letting the pipper come up to the target. Pickling and holding. Just holding. And there you can see the bombs dropping at half second intervals. Nice. Pretty much covered the targets from end to end with that. So, for anybody who wants to know, it's about a two second uh, pattern to get from uh, target one to target three. Well, I think that's going to do it for today. We've, uh, we've done some basic drops and we took a look at how to do some uh, multi-bomb drops uh, and how to use the weapons panel. Hopefully that's all clear. Ah, we always want to take one nice uh, low-level sightseeing pass to enjoy our handiwork, so let's roll back in, pull ourselves up, and dive back at the target again from this side. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop by the Discord server and discuss anything we're talking about here today. I hope this has been uh, helpful as a reminder of how to do the iron bombing or as a way of learning it for the first time. Fly through the smoke here. Nice low pass. Gotta love the sound of an A4 doing a low pass. Well, that's going to about wrap it up for today. If you have enjoyed the video, please do like the video and please subscribe to the channel. And I will continue more of these A4 tutorial missions soon. Probably going to do, well, there's a bunch of things we got lined up. Anyways. For now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.